Okay, well, welcome everybody. Welcome students and family uh, to this great uh, hall, part of the University of Adelaide. And um, my name is Associate Professor David Brown. I'm the Acting Dean of the Adelaide Law School. I'm going to do this presentation in conjunction with my colleague, our course advisor, Rose Cesare, who's going to talk a bit later on about some of the nuts and bolts of our program and entry into our programs. So, um, I'm glad to see so many of you here. We were a bit worried about the weather. We heard it was going to be rather cold, and that's my excuse uh, for not wearing the Seek Light T-shirt that you would have seen around the place. Um, I wasn't brave enough to wear it, but as it turned out, the weather was fine. So uh, I'm going to tell you a bit of an overview and a context of the law school here and what we do, and um, by all means, come and ask questions afterwards. I'll hang around afterwards, but we also have a desk over in the Nexus 10 building, which Rose will tell you about, where we've got staff answering questions and talking to you all day long. So feel free to go over there. And in the law school, we've got a number of activities uh, and talks later on in the day, as you'll see from your program. And the law library is open um, if you want to go and visit that uh, august institution. OK, so just to talk a little bit about um, the uh, history of, uh, of our, our, our law school. Um, it is the second oldest law school uh, in Australia. I'm not going to tell you which is the oldest. Um, but still, we've been around since 1883. And uh, of course, history is very important. If you wander along North Terrace here, you'll see the buildings uh, such as this one next door. We've got the, the Mitchell building and just behind the Elder, Elder Hall. And on this side, uh, we've got the law school, which is actually relatively modern compared to, to these fine buildings, but in fact is, is nearly 50 years old. Um, so in that respect, we are uh, the oldest uh, law school, obviously, in South Australia and the second oldest in the country. And it was really only about 30 years ago there were only 10 law schools in the country, um, but now there are over 30. So Adelaide Law School was also one of the first to admit women and uh, so, so, some d very distinguished uh, women law graduates have come through um, our doors. Uh, I can see one from here. No, not in the audience. I'm looking on the wall at a picture of uh, Dame Roma Mitchell. In fact, if you look around this room, I can see at least four um, distinguished law graduates uh, who've become chancellor of this university. Uh, so, so um, of course, history isn't everything. And I'll tell you a little bit about our history, but of course, you can't dwell on history and, and be complacent about, uh, about uh, where you're at um, in the current um, climate. So whilst we're very proud of our history, it doesn't hold us back. And at the same time, we are a very modern and forward-thinking law school. But just to tell you a little bit about, more about our history, not only do we have chancellors who are graduates of our law school, we have quite a few chief justices and justices of the Supreme Court of South Australia. Uh, just here's a couple of examples um, from the, the current era. Pro Pro professor John Doyle, who is still an adjunct professor with an office in our building, and Chief Justice uh, Karakis, the current Chief Justice of South Australia. These are just a few of the many um, Justices of South Australia who've, who've uh, been trained uh, and educated at the Adelaide Law School. We have leading uh, public officials, politicians. Um, we've, we've, got f we've had four premiers of South Australia who've, who graduated from our law school, uh, including the current premier, and also a number of federal politicians from both sides of the uh, political fence and you might recognize some of them. Of course, academics as well, in terms of our pedigree as an academic institution, we've actually um, produced some of the finest academics in the world who've made a real difference in a number of uh, spheres. Just to give you a few of those, 
Uh, it really is not the tip of the iceberg, but perhaps the ice, icing on the cake in terms of, of, of those academics who have gone around the world to work in a, a variety of institutions, not just here in Adelaide and in Australia, but around the world. Professor James Crawford, um, who is currently a professor at Cambridge and um, a very distinguished international lawyer who very recently led Australia's um, successful case against, against Japan in relation to whaling. And another international lawyer who works uh, in Australia, Professor Anne Orford, who probably was a student of, of, of uh, some of our other international law um, professors um, over the years, including um, Ivan Shearer, who's still an adjunct professor uh, at Adelaide Law School and uh, was the, uh, the tutor of James Crawford. Professor John Finnis is a professor at Oxford. In fact, he taught me uh, quite some time ago. Um, and he's a leading legal theorist, a very eminent legal theorist um, in, in what we call juris, jurisprudence. And so um, these are just a few examples. And Professor Finnis, for example, was a Rhodes Scholar we have a number of Rhodes Scholars, and uh, he was uh, a student at St. Peter's College. So, as I said, we've, uh, we've, we've uh, produced uh, a number of Rhodes Scholars. So Rhodes Scholars uh, are scholarships to go and study, uh, postgraduate study overseas. Um, uh, in, in, in Oc at Oxford, and um, Fulbright scholarships where uh, students get an opportunity to study uh, in the US or to, uh, to work in the US. Now we do have also a former Prime Minister uh, who has passed through our doors um, and she is uh, still uh, now uh, a, a, an adjunct uh, pr visiting professor um, at this university. And we have one known comedian, of course we have a lot of staff who who think they're very funny, and, uh, and you will hear some of their jokes when you come to lectures, and you can decide for yourself. But we do actually have officially one uh, recognized comedian, uh, Sean McAuliffe, who uh, was, is, a, is one of our law graduates. In fact, we actually have two now. We have Amos Gill, who's an up-and-coming comedian that some of you might have seen at the Fringe Festival, and who was, was in my corporate law class a few years ago. So, um, it, it's, it's not all dry and serious at Adelaide Law School. There is a funny side. Um, thinking about some of the current work that we're doing, some of the um, current academics are really working in, in fields where they're making a real difference, both, both at home and abroad. Just to give you a few examples, a couple of our professors, Rosemary Owens and Andrew Stewart, uh, have recently done work for the Fair Work Ombudsman, which was commissioned uh, to be done by them, uh, where they're looking at um, work experience, unpaid internships, and ca casual work, uh, where, which is um, cru crucial work. They've, they've discovered that there's quite a, quite a, a large pool of, of unpaid work uh, being done throughout, throughout the country. Um, and to some extent, peop uh, people, particularly young people, um, are being, have been exploited in some of these, um, some of these uh, positions and certainly clarification of, of, of the rights of, of interns and unpaid workers uh, has really been highlighted by the work that Andrew and Rosemary have done and it's certainly making a real impact and it's received quite a lot of media coverage last year. So um, another example of current work that, that's being done. Uh, Adam Webster is one of our newest members of staff, uh, became a lecturer here earlier this year, although he has been here for some time doing his PhD, and he was a Fulbright scholar and spent time in the US, in Colorado, looking at the regulation of allocation of water rights, and is particularly looking in the context of the Murray-Darling Basin and trying to resolve um, disputes in relation to that. And so that is uh, valuable work, uh, again, that's being done by one of our young scholars currently. 
So just to give you um, some sort of context, of course, if you think about the study of law, and of course I realize there's different um, degrees of, of experience and understanding uh, amongst the audience in relation to what is law, uh, where do we find the law. I mean, I think if you open a newspaper any day of the week, um, particularly a, a better quality one, let's say, but any newspaper really, um, you, or, or op open the equivalent on, on the computer, um, you'll see law everywhere. Uh, you just won't always uh, think about it um, consciously that, that you're dealing with law. But really, um, most interactions that we have in society, whether it be uh, locally, nationally, and of course internationally, um, involve law of some sort, because law is obviously there to give us protections and to facilitate our everyday um, dealings in society. So when we study law, we, uh, the, the actual sources of law, a variety of sources, of course, you have laws, as, it, as in legislation, acts of parliament that, 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 that govern our conduct, but also unwritten laws that have historically um, come, come through the ju judgments of the courts, what we call the common law. But also, in terms of national and international law, we have the constitution, of course, in Australia, and then we have international conventions and treaties, and we look at all of those in different courses and the interaction between them. So there's a whole uh, panoply of sources of law that come within um, the study of law. But not only that, we study the role of law in society, which is obviously um, concepts of, of justice and the rule of law, which you will have heard um, much talk about, in, particularly in an international context, um, current, current disputes, obviously, and tragedies around the world where international law has a role to play and really um, trying to uh, encourage promotion of the rule of law as a concept of, of, of regulating a just society. So these are all things you get a chance to look at and explore and understand in, in the study of law. Of course, law is a professional degree to, to the extent that it does lead to the possibility that you can become a lawyer and, and, and work in the legal profession. And so in, in, in terms of the study of law in the undergraduate degree here at Adelaide Law School, we, we recognize that law is a professional qualification and part of our study is to prepare those that wish to finally uh, enter the legal profession to do so. And so as you go through the degree and particularly at, towards the end of the degree, the, the design of our, our courses uh, has that in mind. Uh, and I'll explain a little bit more about that in a minute. But of course, um, when you're thinking about doing law, uh, it's certainly something to bear in mind that it is uh, the method of, of entry into the legal profession to do a law degree and then some further study, as, a, as I'll explain. Um, the legal profession itself, it is a profession, and so when you're entering a profession, um, what, what, it, what is a profession? It's, it's, a, 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 it's a service which is governed by a, a set of um, a code of conduct, um, and ethical standards of behavior, and these are all recognized, particularly in, in the study of law and in the professional uh, codes of conduct. And we, we look at these in the course of the law degree, what legal ethics is, an, ethics is an important part of our, our law degree, which is embedded throughout uh, the degree. And we, we look at issues about what it means to be a professional and, and a lawyer in the modern day. So, uh, although, of course, law is a, a professional degree, uh, there, there are a lot of things that you can do with a law degree, and not just locally, but nationally, and these days, internationally, we have to recognize we live in, in, in a global era, and therefore, the type of issues that we look at when studying law uh, are not just looked at in isolation in South Australia, or even in, in Australia, um, internationalization of, of our curriculum is inevitable and so if you think of a lot of um, 
interactions uh, that you have in society these days, technology, of course, plays a very large part in terms of globalization and the connectedness that we all have uh, with, with the rest of the world, both in so socially and in business. Uh, and so areas that we study, for example, technology law, intellectual property, media law, internet law, these, these all emer have emerged, obviously, in the last 10 years or so in terms of the global era. And international law, I've already mentioned that we've got a great tradition here at Adelaide Law School in terms of the scholars that we've produced who are world leaders in international law. Um, but in, in terms of our curriculum, this is a very strong part of our curriculum. We made international law a compulsory subject a few years ago in recognition of its importance um, in the world today and, and our history uh, of scholarship in that area. And so just to give you an example, we have a, a humanitarian law um, course which involves a moot and um, there's a picture there of the winners of last year's moot, um, Thomas McCurra and Mark Giddings. And so um, international law and hu humanitarian law and its study and the mooting uh, program, internships as well that you can learn more about over um, in in the law school later today, I think, are all very important in this global era. Now, I mentioned that law is a professional um, degree, but um, law graduates don't just uh, become lawyers. They can become lawyers. A lot of them do become lawyers uh, in a variety of sizes and types of law firm, but also they go into a variety of other um, occupations where they can use their skills and their legal qualifications um, in those contexts. So they might go into corporations as in-house counsel, corporate counsel. They might go into the banking and finance sector where they're not necessarily being lawyers, but certainly the skills that we teach in the law degree are, are very valued in these other um, professions and, and industries. The government, whether it's a state government or federal governments uh, and their agencies, uh, a lot of lawyers go into the, into the government and government agencies. Again, either they're acting as lawyers within those agencies or they're using the skills, the transferable uh, skills and qualities which are the attributes of our, our law degree. Of course, there's more legally connected uh, occupations such as working in the court. You might be working as an associate in the court or for tribunals, uh, but you might go further afield. And so we have uh, graduates working in the UN, Amnesty International, and, and again, particularly through our internship program where we place people with some of these international agencies that um, might, you never know, lead, lead to a more permanent uh, position with them. Um, education, um, of course, university. I'm here as a law graduate um, working in a, a law school, and so uh, whether it's a law school or some other part of the university, um, or other universities, we have law graduates uh, working there. Um, and around the world, as I said, some of the people that I, uh, I showed you earlier were working overseas in the UK. Uh, politics, we've seen, we have a number of politicians, and of course, they're the ones who sort of make the headlines because they're the, the federal and state ministers, but there are a lot of uh, people working as advisors to, uh, to politicians or working as public servants um, in, in government. And uh, increasingly, media, journalism, uh, communications generally, because law does, the, the law degree does give you um, many skills. And of course, if you're a lawyer, your words are your trade, your profession, and therefore, if you're good with words, that might lead, lead you down the path of communications uh, and media. So it's fair to say, though, that, as I said, the law is a professional degree that a lot of our, our, our graduates do, do keep up their, uh, their, their legal qualification, go on to become lawyers. But even if you are a lawyer, there's such a wide variety of, of legal work that you can uh, pursue. Um, Law, law firms in, in Adelaide and um, Australia, but also we have students now working, um, graduates working in Sydney, New York, Hong Kong, 
uh, just to give a few uh, examples of the, the m some major places uh, where they work. Now, of course, they can work as, uh, if you qualify in South Australia, you qualify as a barrister and solicitor. You get that dual qualification. Uh, it's a, jo it's a, f a fused profession, but you can then go on to set yourself up as an independent barrister. So we have, we have people working as barristers. Well, that's, all, that's all they do. They appear in court and give opinions um, about litigation. Um, and uh, I've already mentioned we have people working in human rights organizations and government. Um, and, and we have people working in regional areas in the outback. And you'll find out later today we have a native title internship as well where we post people uh, around the country working um, with, with groups pursuing native title claims. Um, Aboriginal, Aboriginal Legal Rights uh, Commission, for example, and such other organizations. I've mentioned already quite a few areas where, uh, where, where, uh, which are covered in the law degree. Of course, uh, we'll see in a minute there are, there are some core subjects that you have to do when you study law. Um, because, because it is a professional degree, to some extent, we're accredited by the professional bodies and we have to provide a study of certain core subjects and that's the same across the country. So wherever you study law, there are these that, um, 11 subjects which are prescribed, if you like, by the professional accreditation bodies. And so that's okay because they are the building blocks of, of your legal study anyway. But as I said, international law is compulsory here. It's not uh, prescribed as one of those core 11 subjects, but we think it's so important um, that we've made it compulsory here. And that's been a very popular subject in its first year or two. Um, to give you some idea of some other things which are covered in the law degree, public law, relations between the state uh, um, and the individual, between the federal and state uh, governments, um, and ensuring that individuals' rights are protected in their dealings with, this, with the state. Corporate law, commercial law, that's my main area of, of, of scholarship and teaching. Relations, com company relations, business, business relations, buying and selling businesses, company structures, um, banking and finance, those sort of things. Corporate law is a compulsory subject. Um, because, of course, it's so important um, for business dealings. Um, private law, law between uh, disputes between individuals, whether that be about a contract or about um, you know, an injury that somebody's had, either at work or on, on the street. Um, you know, freedom of expression, are you, laws protecting uh, your right to... Uh, to um, have your reputation protected, that's dealt with by the law of torts, defamation, and equity, which is a more sort of ancient body of, of case law, uh, which protects uh, people's rights when there's no other body of law uh, which, is, which is able to do so, but where the justice of the case um, demands uh, a remedy. Family law, of course, is a bit more familiar to you, but increasingly family law these days is, is, is about children, and also increasingly it involves um, international aspects to it or interstate aspects to it as well. Um, and so, as with all of our subjects, whilst we, whilst we are proud of our history, we always have to be evolving, and that's not true just of the law school itself in terms of the way we teach, so increasingly adopting uh, technology, um, and embracing technology in the way that we teach, but also the content of the subjects, because law evolves with society and with, with changes in the way that we interact with each other and, and with government, etc. Intellectual property, um, copyright, for example, uh, inventions, that sort of thing. Uh, increasingly, as I said, dealing with online, the rights involving uh, transactions online and uh, um, creativity and how we manage um, the rights in, in creative works. Environment law, of course, very uh, crucial um, to our planet and, uh, both, uh, and also um, with it within Australia. And so uh, we teach environment law, both uh, domestic and international environment law. 
And we have scholars who are working on, on earth law and um, natural resources, water law I've already mentioned uh, with Adam, but also mining and energy law, obviously very important. Workplace law, I've mentioned two of our professors who are working with in the area of uh, unpaid uh, internships and work experience, but uh, workplace law, we have a whole team of, of experts, scholars who, in that area. They look at not only the rights uh, that you have in the workplace in Australia, but they look at my, the rights of migrant workers, for example. That's an area where uh, we're, we're doing research and teaching. Criminal law, of course, is something that we all know about from the newspapers as an obvious uh, form of law. And of course, we study criminal law. It's one of the compulsory 11 subjects. And uh, again, we have a whole team of people who's, who research and, and teach in that area on the different aspects of criminal law and criminal procedure and evidence uh, in court, etc. So there's plenty more that I could talk about, but um, time does not permit. And um, not only do we um, teach these subjects um, in the classroom, but we have uh, lots of other ways in which you can get involved in the program as a whole. I've already mentioned the internship program for human rights, but increasingly we are uh, having study tours to different parts of the world. And these are courses in their own right. So you can do a course which involves you going to study um, for a few weeks, um, a study program where you get the opportunity to, to visit courts or lawyers or institutions and have, have seminars. Um, for example, we started off doing a uh, European one a couple of years ago, and in a few weeks we've got one going to the US uh, where they're gonna visit the Pentagon and the Brookings Institute in, in Washington and a number of other places, Harvard, for example. Um, we're planning one to China next year and possibly also one to Singapore and Malaysia. And so increasing the university and indeed the law school and the faculty up are, are trying to make sure every student has the opportunity at some point to, to have an overseas experience, whether that be a study tour or of course a longer uh, exchange uh, that you can do. We've got our internships, which I've mentioned, and then we've also got various other clinical programs which we have where you can work in the magistrate's court clinic that we run, um, give advice to homeless people. We've started a new one on consumer credit, um, and some of these are based in the court, court buildings um, themselves. And in the law school, we also have the Office of Justice Net, which is a a state-run state non-profit organization which assists um, self-represented litigants, people who can't afford um, lawyers uh, to, to act for them in civil cases where they're not eligible um, for legal aid. And so uh, our students um, volunteer in that service as well. So there's a wide variety of clinical experiences that you can have um, whilst being part of the program for which you get credit. A few things that we've done in the last few years, which are additions to our program and partnerships that we've got. Uh, once you've done your law degree, if you want to become a lawyer, you have to do a post admission, uh, a postgraduate um, short course called, called the Graduate Diploma in Legal Practice. So that's what it's called in South Australia. In other states, it's sometimes called Practical Legal Training, PLT. Um, the Law Society for a number of years has run this uh, course and we have gone into partnership with them just over a year ago um, to deliver this course. And so if you do the graduate diploma in legal practice, um, you, it's an Adelaide graduate diploma. It's on your transcript and you graduate at our graduation ceremony. And so it's a partnership with the Law Society and there are advantages of doing the, the, the GDLP um, th through us because the Law Society has great links with the local, the local profession, uh, and many of those people teach on the course. Um, and so, um, of course, you'll still be part of the university as well, so you continue your university enrollment and services as well. Another thing that we've introduced in the last year or so is something which is an optional extracurricular program called the Next Steps Program, because we realize students need advice 
about where they're heading in their career, what options are open to them, because I've mentioned already there's a wide variety of things you can do uh, with a law degree. And so we've started running a series of workshops, just had one the other night on women in the law, which was sold out. Um, there was no, uh, no, no space. Um, because it's so popular, and also we run other seminars on how to write your CV, interview skills, um, so that our graduates can get a, a, a heads up in terms of, a leg up in terms of um, going out into the workforce, and particularly in, in the legal profession, um, or in using their, their legal skills in other ways. Uh, also, we've run a, another kind of uh, extra, optional extra, if you like, uh, which is called Law and Wellbeing. Um, and this is a, this is a program to, 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 to just promote uh, students' welfare and just to understand mental health and, and, and st st stress is a feature of, of university study and, uh, and law study and, and just, just student life in general. And so this program has been a great, a very popular addition to the sort of extracurricular life in the law school. So you'll see we've got a wide variety of, of fun activities, including comedy workshops, so you can all become like Sean McAuliffe eventually. If you don't become a lawyer, you can become a comedian, um, but also table tennis, yoga, knitting. And these things, when, when they're happening in the law school, it's a, it's a, real, a real buzz there, and the, st the staff get involved as well with the students, and it's been a, r a real success. And, and just made, you know, we're very proud of that program, and we've we've gone out to tell other universities about it, and it's 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 uh, proved to be very popular. And um, I think, you know, we're going to obviously continue it because the atmosphere um, around the place is um, is really buzzing. So I've mentioned study tours already, so I won't say any more about them. You know, we're, we're planning more and. Uh, you can see from that European one there uh, that we did last year, the type of things we do. We go to the International uh, Peace Palace, the International Law Court in The Hague, uh, visit various embassies and our partner um, institution at Mannheim with whom we have a postgraduate joint degree, uh, a master's degree with Mannheim University uh, in Germany. So uh, I've mentioned some of these activities that you can get involved in through your courses, um, the internships and the, the overseas study and the various exchange. The university has a lot of exchange agreements uh, with universities around the world. But we also have what we call law to law school exchanges where we've actually entered into a direct agreement with a law school in another country. And so I've listed up there some of the main ones that we have these law to law agreements and we're adding new ones. So this year we've just added, we've signed an agreement with Peking University and Shanghai Jiao Tong, the two of the top universities in China and also the University of Alberta in Canada. Um, so there's plenty of opportunity for you to uh, get out of Adelaide but still while studying your law degree here. And uh, uh, also the Law Student Society runs a number of uh, programs and competitions and they run mooting and negotiation competitions, client interviewing, but also in the law school we have a moot court program. Mooting is the, the art of arguing a case, and so you have a kind of a mock, a mock argument that you might have um, in, say, uh, an appellate court in Australia, where you get to research and argue the case in front of a judge, and often we use real judges or, or lawyers to come in and and be the judges for those. So I think you can see that you know what we try to do. You know we're proud of our history and we build on that um, history of of teaching law uh, by giving students the theoretical foundation to the study of law, but also increasingly through the degree practical elements so that we educate and prepare you whether you're going to be a lawyer or use your law degree uh, in some other way. And I've already mentioned ethics and practical elements um, woven through the program. And the idea of studying law is for you to be a critical thinker, for you to be able to challenge things, analyze why things are the way they are, think about 
things in the round, look at the socio-political context of what you're studying, because in many, if not all areas of law, there's a socio-political context to it. If you think about public law, constitutional law, criminal law, there are big issues, there are big policy questions about which we can all argue and disagree. Um, what we do in the law is try to work out, well, how, how do we respond to those? Can we reform the law to, to deal with some of those issues? How do we balance the rights of, often we're involved with balancing rights on either side. Um, and so increasingly, when you get to the final year of study, we have courses where you're looking at skills such as advocacy, which will uh, give you a more hands-on experience, dispute resolution, ethics, I've already mentioned. And throughout your law degree, you get the opportunity to apply this sort of critical thinking and analysis and, and um, research and writing skills, because writing and uh, and thinking is obviously a very important part of a law degree. Um, now, we've got various pathways into the law degree, and Rose is going to tell you a bit in a minute uh, more about those. Um, well, we, we've started this new uh, pathway in the, about two years ago, um, the, the, the achievement pathway, or the high achievers pathway, where subject to uh, a kind of uh, minimum ATAR requirement, um, we're trying to offer a place to um, the highest achiever in every school in the state who wants to do um, a law degree um, and, and puts law as a preference. And Rose can tell you more about that later. Obviously, um, school leavers, the majority of our, our students obviously are school leavers, but we do have students who transfer from other uh, institutions as well and a small, smaller number of, of students who come from um, graduating um, from another program. Although, uh, of course, many of our students, and many of you might choose to do dual degrees where you'll be doing uh, commerce or arts or something else um, in the university. And also we've got um, some special programs, special pathways where you can come through through TAFE into, into our, our law, law degree, if you've done these special courses. Okay, so the high achievers pathway, or, or the achievement pathway, is a new thing that we, we, we decided to do to try to, to increase the, the, the opportunity for students from all over the state to get into to Adelaide Law School. Um, and so, as I said, it depends on the ATAR you get um, but it's lower than our usual ATAR, and uh, it also depends on it, whether you've put law uh, as a preference, uh, because obviously we want people <laughs> who want to be here, and um, it's um, certainly uh, making a real difference. So we've got a um, range of students coming from all over the state now who are starting to come through this program. Okay, now I'm going to hand over to to Rose Cetere, who's our course advisor. And so she's the authority on everything to do with how to get in and what are the requirements uh, for our law degree. And um, both of us will be available afterwards. Uh, and also we've got other people available over in Nexus 10 to answer any questions. But I'll see you again shortly. Rose, over to you. Thanks, David. Good morning all. As David mentioned, my name's Rose Ciceri. I'm the Law School Student Advisor. Today I'm going to talk you through a few of our slides to give you an overview of each of our undergraduate law programs. So as listed, we have our single degree program, which is a four-year four -year program, our double degrees, um, typically a five-year program. The graduate entry program is three years, and our honours program, which is currently under review, is a program that recognises excellence and currently determined by a GPA calculation. So you're all probably wondering what the entry requirements are for each of our programs. Our undergraduate four-year degree for school leavers, it is expected that the majority of offers will be made under this category. The ATAR for this year was 95.1. For tertiary transfer students, so you need to have completed at least a half year, 
full-time tertiary studies, achieving about a credit average. Special entry, the stat test score required for special entry was a 78 in 2014, and for our achievement program, the minimum ATAR was 80. Now for our double degree program, it is also expected that the majority of our offers will be made under this category. The ATAR for 2014 was 95.1. Our double degree program is designed for applicants wishing to study law concurrently with another degree. Some of our double degrees include law and arts, law and commerce, law and social science, law and media, just to name a few. Our graduate entry program. So the graduate entry program, a completion of relevant tertiary studies at degree level or higher is required. The score needed for this program is approximately a credit average. Now for each of our programs, as David mentioned, there are 13 core courses that need to be completed and are required for admissions to practice. The core courses are shown on the slide and include foundations of law, principles of public law, corporate law, and in your final year, dispute resolution and ethics, evidence and proof and theory. So in total, the core courses make up a total of 57 units. Now for single degree students, an additional 39 units of electives need to be completed. 12 of those units can be non-law electives or even completed overseas as part of one of our approved exchange programs. For our double degree programs and graduate program, students will need to complete 15 units of law electives on top of, of course, the 57 units of our compulsory courses. And of course, for double degree students, they also need to complete their other degree in order to graduate. So over to the next slide, this gives you an idea of what elective courses we offer. We have a wide range of elective courses. These include environmental law, media law, insolvency law, and family law. And of course, David has mentioned some previously. Now I know this has probably given you a quick rundown, but hopefully this has given you an overview of our undergraduate law programs. I'm sure you have lots of questions you'd like to ask. Uh, may I remind you again, as David mentioned, we are located at Nexus 10 over at Pulteney Street, corner of Pulteney Street and North Terrace. So I will be there to answer questions. My colleague Cheryl Chapman, who's also a program advisor, will be able to answer questions. And we also have several of our academics and current law students. Now, just before I hand you back over to David, just wanted to um, let you know that we, of course, have um, two sessions that we're holding. Um, so at 12 o'clock, two of our academics will be holding a session in, re in relation to our native title and human rights internship programs. The session will be held in the Lidgetwood building, so on the left-hand side of Benython Hall in the Moot Court. And at one o'clock, our Law Student Society will be holding a, or hosting a presentation, a day in the life of a law student. So both very interesting sessions, and I hope you'll be able to join us. Thank you. Now over for, to David for the conclusion of our session. Uh, thank you, Rose. So um, my time is up, and I just want to say thank you to Rose, and I just reiterate that if you've got any questions, I'm here, and I'll be wandering over to the Nexus 10 counter as well, or by all means try to grab me right now outside so the next session can, can prepare. Thanks very much.